video podcast here. We started our recording here. We've got a backup recording going. And we're looking forward to a fantastic afternoon with everybody. Um, first of all, I guess I should say hello, Michelle. Hello. Hello. And have a, hello, everybody. Very nice to see you. It's fantastic to be here. Um, I'm in awe of all your technical knowledge. As you know, I'm not, I'm not that good at that sort of thing. So fantastic. We'll just have to take it as it comes. And um, I should say in advance, excuse me if I cough occasionally, because I'll always after publicity tours, I go down with something. So I shall try to mute the sound before I cough. Uh, Wolfie Rocker is saying, hi, Michelle. Hello, Wolfie Rocker. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're going to do our first call now. It's going to Belgium. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it's going to work out all right. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Hello. This is the clan cast calling you. Give me your clan name, please. My clan name is Aisha. Hello, Aisha. You are talking to Michelle. Hello, Aisha. It's wonderful to talk to you. Oh, hello. <laughs> As you can imagine, I'm really excited. Um, your books are all excellent, and um, I'm really a great fan. So, well, thank you very much. And may I say, your English is amazing. Um, I'm really impressed. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's kind of you to say that because I'm I'm French and I've been learning English for uh, five years now. So. Well, that's very impressive. So, have you read the books in French or in English? Well, I read the the first one that's say Wolf Brother in um, French, and mm -hmm. then uh, I found that the style and everything was much better in English. Uh huh. Yes. And uh, so I decided to continue reading them. Right. Do you have a question that you'd like to ask me? Yes. Um, so uh, how did you come up with um, the inspiration to write the books? Well, that came in bits and pieces over many, many years. Um, the first bit came when I was about 10 and I was really keen on wolves and I wanted a wolf of my own, but my parents wouldn't give me one. Um, <laughs> not surprisingly, because we live in London. Um, and I was also very keen on the Stone Age and, and I, I slept on the floor and I skinned a rabbit to make clothes out of and I was really keen on that sort of thing um, and then I grew up and I sort of thought I'd forgotten about it um, but many years later I had a really scary meeting with a bear in in the, the mountains in Southern California and um, obviously I survived but that made me feel as if I'd been back in the Stone Age again so all those things came together a few years later and, and that's how it came about. Wow, that's a very long story. <laughs> it is a long story, yes. I've and uh, it. it's a very interesting one too. And uh, do so now do you have a wolf of your own? I don't have a wolf of my own. I'm glad you asked that, Asia, um, because many people ask me that. I know there are pictures of me on, on the clan with wolves. But no, I go to visit wolves um, in the UK Wolf Conservation Trust. It's a, it's a wolf reserve in the country in England. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've got to know some wolves very well. Um, they had a few cubs a few years ago, and one of them was named Torak. And I've got to know him very well. So he feels like my own wolf, but he's not. Thank okay. you very much, Aisha. It's great talking to you and uh, stick Thank around you. in the clan. Lots of exciting things are happening there. Great talking to you, okay. Aisha. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, we are... Let's see where we're going to next. You know what? We're going to try and speak to somebody in Brazil. Wow. And I don't speak Portuguese, so we'll have to... Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And sometime in the morning in Brazil, I think. Hello? Yeah, Hi. hello, hello. What's your clan name? What? Can you repeat? Yeah, hello. What's your clan name? What's your clan name? I... Ouch. Ouch. Um, I... Ouch. <laughs> Okay, are we speaking to Ouch? No. <laughs> All right, what's your clan name? Uh, um, um, David, I think. Okay, what would you like to ask Michelle? 
Um, yes, please. Yes. Okay, yes, you're speaking to her. What would you Hello, like to David. ask her? Hello, David. Hello. She's speaking to you. She, uh, he wants to ask, from all the places to which you traveled, which one was the more inspiratory? And second, did you have any contact with the wild wolf before you wrote one of your books? Well, now, the first question, um, which was the most inspiring um, uh -huh. place? I, th I think anywhere in the Arctic, the very far north, um, th there was one particular walk uh, in Greenland in the summer that I took on my own for seven hours um, to the edge of a glacier, um, an ice river in Torax language. Wow. And that was amazing because um, I was a bit scared <laughs> um, and the ice river kept making weird noises as if there was a giant inside. So that was very inspiring. It made me feel I was, I was back in time. Um, and your other question was about, yes, had I had encounters with wild wolves before I wrote the books? I'd never actually seen wolves in the wild because mostly you don't um, because they're very good at staying hidden. But I had uh, in the mountains of Transylvania, um, in, in Romania, I'd come across wolf tracks uh, crossing my own and I'd come across wolf droppings, um, scat. And so there were signs of wolves um, and I'd heard them howling in Poland as well, in, in the mountains of southern Poland. So I'd, there were traces of wolves, but I hadn't seen them. And that in a way was more inspiring because it's, it's wonderful to go walking in a, in a forest where there are wolves. Uh, uh, thank you very much. That's a great pleasure. It's wonderful to talk to somebody so far away for me in Brazil. It must be early in the morning for you. No, no. Uh, no it's one, uh, one, uh, 1 p.m. Okay, it's lunchtime. There we are. I'm no good at maths, so there we are. <laughs> very nice talking to you. Thank you very much for your call. That's, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Fantastic. We've got one or two questions here as well, actually, Michelle. Uh -huh. I'd just like to fire one at you. This sure. is from... A Wren of the Ravens has my hair. That's a long name, isn't it? Um, and she says, when Wren's father was killed, what was he doing in the far north? It always seemed to be kept very mysterious, and I thought he would have a role to play in the last book, but obviously it didn't. So I just wondered, why was he there? Wren's father? Um, mm. He wasn't really in the far north as such. Um, well, he'd, he'd gone north, and then he, he, he ended up, um, because they found his body... Um, near the uh, the lake, as I recall, Lake Axehead. So he was sort of north-ish. Um, you're never going to find out exactly, nobody knows exactly what he was doing, but, and this is a, a slight spoiler in case you haven't, anyone hasn't read um, Outcast, but by the, by the time he, he was nearing his end, he knew that his, his mate, uh, Seshru, um, was no good. And so that was a huge disappointment to him, disillusionment. Mm -hmm. So he'd, he'd left his clan, he was wandering off. He, he in a sense, he sought his death. Um, that's what, that was what Finn Kedin suspected, but nobody ever knew because they found him um, dead later on. Um, and I think they, they recovered his body much later, didn't they? Um, this is the description in, in Outcast. Yeah. Um, so that's a really searching question, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, shall we try and see if we can go to Bahrain? Excellent. Bahrain, here we go. Keep our fingers crossed. Fantastic. Hello. 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 There. Hello. What's your clan Hi. name? Uh, Spirit World. Spirit World. Spirit World. Spirit World. Okay, Spirit World, you're talking to Michelle. Hello, Spirit World. Hi, Michelle. I'm so <laughs> weird. Hi. Spirit World. Hello. Hello. Excellent. It's, Hello. it's very nice to talk to you. Um, have you got a question for me? Yeah, I'm actually plenty. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. Okay. Do you have... Uh, let's start, okay? Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you have a name for Fa in your mind? Uh, you don't have to mention the name, just me. Spirit, 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 spirit. I, I, I do have, um, the, it, the question is, do I have a name for far? Yes, I but do. I, and I'm not going to tell you. Um, and I appreciate yeah. that what you wanted to know was, did I, do I have a name in my mind? Yes, I do. Um, I always have to name my characters. So I knew before I wrote Wolf Brother what Far's name was and what Torak's mother's name was. 
but I'm afraid I'm I'm not going to reveal that. Okay. Oh. Have you got another question? Yeah, of course. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Uh, the second question: Why have you chosen Aostra to be the last soul eater? Well, I chose Aostra to be the last soul eater because I thought she was the scariest. Um, and generally, when you're writing, you try to save the strongest till last, um, whether it's the end of your book or the end of your series. And so I really felt that because she is trying to cross the boundaries between the living and the dead, she's the scariest of all of them. And that's why I felt I had to leave her to the last. Good okay, let's move, to the, let's move to the third question. Okay. <laughs> will, will, there, <laughs> will there be Chronicles of Ancient Darkness box sets? If yes, when it will come and what from that? Um, I think there will be Chronicles of Ancient Darkness box sets. Um, I can't be very certain because that's really a decision for my publishers. Um, and, but I, certainly I was talking to my publisher uh, about a month ago and she said, yeah, we know we're planning them, but we haven't got very far along the, the road yet. So I'm afraid I don't know what they're going to look like yet because I don't think the publishers do either. Um, so we'll just have to work out something quite special, I think. But yes, there will be. I think I think there will be yes. Thank you very much, Spirit yeah. World. Fantastic. What's the, what's the weather like in Bahrain right now? Uh, it's really hot. Can I ask, can I just ask the fourth question? It's because it's really important. Okay, quickly. Okay. <laughs> All the titles of the books are related to Torek. Yeah. But in Ghost Hunter, it's related to Torek indirectly and with several meanings. Why and why Wolf shared the name with Torek? Um. I like having several meanings for titles. Um, so, so, you know, the fact that Ghost Hunter refers also to a wolf, but also to Torak, and in many ways to Torak. Um, I just like that. It's, it's got, it gives it a sort of richness. Authors like richness in their books. Um, so, so that's really the reason. It's just, it makes it more interesting for readers um, to have many meanings in the title. Okay, thank you. That's all what I have. Well, fantastic. Thank it's been you a very pleasure much, talking well. to you. Thanks very much for, for being you. on the line. Thank fantastic. you. Okay, and from sunny Bahrain. Well, I guess it's always sunny there, really. Um, why don't we go to um, England and see what things are like there? <laughs> Which, where it's not sunny at all. <laughs> no, almost certainly not. No. It's raining in London. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Who? What's your What's your uh, clan name, please? Amber Eyes Wolf. Amber, Amber Eyes Wolf. Wolf. Fantastic. Well, you're talking to Michelle. Hello, Amber Eyes Wolf. <laughs> I'm Michelle. <laughs> okay. What would you like to ask her? Um, is it hard to write the books? Is it hard to write the books? Yes, it is hard. I mean, it's really, really fun. Um, the easiest bit is writing. Is doing the research, you know, swimming with killer whales, going to meet the wolves. That's really, really fun, and it's not very difficult because I just have a little notebook um, and I take things down. When I get to the stage of writing and planning the story, it's really hard. And just to show you, actually, I brought along. I didn't know you were going to ask this, but um, I brought along um, a piece of the manuscript to show you what it looks like. I don't know if you can see anything, but you can mm. probably, yeah, you can probably see how scribbled it on, scribbled on it is. That's the first page of, I, I named it chapter 29, it eventually became chapter 33. You can see all the crossings out, you know, you can hardly read anything, it's just ridiculous. And then I type it up, and that's the same page typed up. Again, loads of scribbles. And I do that about 30 or 40 times, um, and just, you know, just to show you, actually, I, that's the bit in chapter 33, which starts off, flames leapt, shadows reared, on its pillar, the Tokoroth clutched a sputtering torch and glared at Torak. So that's when Torak's just gone into the mountain of ghosts. But now you realise how much crossing out and, and generally scribbling goes into to writing the book. So yes, it is hard, but it's incredibly fun. And occasionally it will come alive and I'll feel as if Torak and Ren and Wolf are really there. I can almost see them. Um, so that's when all the scribbling and the crossing out is, is worth it. That's a good question. Thank you. Very good question. Do you yeah. have another question at all? Um, yes. Are you going to write any more books? I am definitely going to write more books. In fact, I am hard at work on planning the next series. Um, I'm afraid I can't tell you what it's called yet because I'm a bit superstitious. I like to keep 
um, the details um, to myself until I'm sure of them. But it's going to be set, uh, the series, in still in prehistoric times, a little bit later than Torak and Wren and Wolf's time, and a different part of the world, but still prehistoric. And I'm getting really keen on it. And I think it's going to be about five books, I think. Um, so, yeah, um, lots of animals. Not so many wolves, I have to say, um, but different animals. And, um, yeah, I'm getting very, very keen on the main characters. So, um, oh, yeah, definitely. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Amber Eyes uh, Wolf. And you can be sure that people on the clan will be the first to know oh, yes. when, when Michelle does uh, finally announce whatever she's going to do next. Yeah, yeah. Nice yes, talking thanks. to you. Thanks very much for talking to, to me. Okay, so we stay in England for the moment. We have another clanner. We're just going to try calling. It's all going quite well so far. <laughs> don't say that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say that. Hello. Hello. Hello there. What's your clan name? Uh, my clan name's Demon Bear. Demon, Demon Bear. Bear. You're talking to Michelle. Hello, Demon Bear. Hello. Um, I've got three questions. Hopefully they're not, um, like, difficult. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> which book did you enjoy writing most? You know, that's incredibly... That is actually quite a difficult question um, because... It's almost impossible to answer because I love each of the books for different reasons because they're, you know, different parts of the Torax world and he's growing up and, and um, Wolf's going through different things. Um, but generally, I think it's the, the one I've just finished is my favourite because, you know, writing is, is really hard, as I, as, as I said um, to somebody else. Um, but when you finally finish a book, it's very, very satisfying. Uh, and so you tend to think, oh, you know, that was really hard, but now I've finished it. So that's my favourite book. And you forget that you felt that with all the other books. Um, so that's a long, waffly answer. I don't really know. Um, how do you think of the names for the characters? Because they're all really interesting. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, the names, uh, the short answer is I had to make them up because we don't know any Stone Age names. Um, so Torak, for example, I just, I took sounds from old languages like Old Norse, which is what the Vikings used to talk, um, some ancient Egyptian and some Inuit. Um, Torak actually does mean something I found out when I went to Greenland. It means uh, perfect in Inuit. Um, of course, he's not perfect, but it's, it's quite a nice name. Um, in Kedin, I made up. That's perhaps my favourite name. I'm very proud of that name. I think it fits him perfectly. I have to say some of the names I did get from mythology. Um, Thiazi uh, is based on Thiasi, who was a, an, a Viking storm giant. Um, Seon, I think, is Norse as well. Um, Aostra is actually based on the Anglo-Saxon ancient goddess of Easter. Um, and I just like the sound of the name. But most of them I have made up. So I'm, I'm glad you like them. Uh, it takes ages, I can tell you. Wolf, of course, was the, long, the, the one that took the longest. Um, because it took me ages to realise that he is just Wolf. It took me three days. Um, and will Ian McKellen read the audiobooks for the next series? Well, ah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, is the answer. Um, he may just be too busy uh, because, you know, he was, he was fantastic in, in, in finding time to read all of, all of these books. Um, I mean, for example, the last one, Ghost Hunter, he was actually um, working in, in the theatre doing Waiting for Godot, a play, every single day. And he, he took time out on his days off and... Um, you know, days when he was doing performances in the evening, he would then come and read Ghost Hunter. So I don't want to pressurise him. Um, it would be lovely, of course, if he did, but I don't want him to feel pressurised because I think it's magnificent that he's read all six books. Uh, and I've been present for all of his uh, recordings, which has been a real treat for me to watch him recording. Best bit of the year for me because I don't have to do anything. I just sit and watch him. Thank you very much, Demon Bear. Great questions. Yes, thank you, Demon Bear. They really were really good questions. Thank you. Bye. Okay, Bye. Um, I think we are probably staying in England for the next one. Um, before we, we take the next call, I just want to say, I know some people are experiencing a bit of lag, unfortunately. I don't really think it's our end. 
Um, it does happen from time to time, but the good news is, of course, that we are doing a video recording of this that will be available almost as soon as we've finished. So you can watch then if, if there's anything that you really can't see because of the bad lag. And we're also doing a very high quality audio podcast as well, and that'll be up quite soon too. So don't despair. If you're getting a bit of um, internet lag at the moment, don't worry about it. You will be able to catch up. All right, let's try another clanner, and this is still in England. <laughs> Lucky them. Um, no, okay. We are going to try a different clan this time. And yes, yeah, still in England. And another, another one from England. Do make sure that uh, you're ready to take the call, please. Otherwise, we'll just have to pass over you. Hello there. What's your clan name? Uh, you're calling Demon Bear again. Oh, sorry, Demon oh, Bear. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> sorry. What? <laughs> My mistake. Excuse me. Um, Right, this is the person I meant to call. Hello there. Hello. Hello, what's your clan name? Can you talk a bit louder? Yeah, sorry. Um, Silent Ocarina. Silent Ocarina. Okay, you're talking to Michelle. Hello, Silent Ocarina. Hello. Hi. What would you like to ask her? Um... What's the most interesting fact you've discovered about um, the kind of civilization that Tarak lives in? Huh, the most interesting fact? Um, you know, there are so many that it's very difficult <laughs> yeah. for me to think. But, but I think one of the things that, that really made Tarak civilization um, alive for me was when I discovered the pact. Um, you know, this is the idea, I think it's described in Wolf Brother, that when you kill an animal, you're honour bound to use every part yeah. of it. And I didn't make that up. Um, the pact, um, as it's described in the story, um, comes from the Nunamut um, Eskimos. Um, and they're called, they call themselves Eskimos rather than Inuit um, in, in parts of Canada. Um, and that there are different forms of the pact among hunter-gatherers all over the world. And I didn't really know that until I did the research. And I, I think that's amazing. Um, and I think that's probably the most amazing thing because it's, it's quite a lot of work using all the bits of an animal, um, yeah. you know, and uh, it's quite ingenious what they do with them. And so that really yeah. brought it alive for me. So that's a really good question. Thank you. Do you have another question? Um, no, not really. All um, right. I, I just want to say that um, I really, really enjoy reading your books and I, I have a chronic illness so I can't get out very much and they really cheer me up and... Thank you. I'm so pleased that you enjoy them. That's that's brilliant. And um, thank you for for telling me that. And um, I am writing another series, so I, I hope you'll enjoy that too. So thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Silent Ocarina. Stick around with the clan. Mm -hmm. And now we are. Um, I tell you what. There's a, there's someone who's just asked a question. Sorry, I'm just trying to hang up here. <laughs> the technology is I wondered, it sounded much. like a sort of the surf or the sea or something. Yeah, it's quite a nice sound. Yeah, didn't it? Yeah. Um, we've got uh, Raven Girl Wren, who's just asked a question in, in the chat room live, which you can do if you're in the chat room right mm -hmm. now. Make sure that um, you ask whatever questions you want to, and hopefully I'll see them. She says, Dear Michelle, what gave you the idea to portray Wolf in such an animal way, whereas other books, the animals think and act in the same way? For example, Firebringer and The Sight. Huh. Um, I think the aim, I, I'm not quite sure, but the aim was always, you see, in writing the books, to make them real. Uh, whether I was dealing with Torak or Finn Kedin or the Soul Eaters, I wanted the story to be real and for you to feel that everything could have happened in the story. And so it was very important to me, um, because I like wolves, to make Wolf a real wolf. Um, it just never occurred to me to make him a sort of um, Dr. Doolittle sort of talking animal, but who's really a human being. Mm. Um, so because I wanted to make him real, I, I did quite a lot of research on how on wolf behavior. Um, and then what really brought it uh, alive was the first time I wrote from Wolf's point of view, because then I became a wolf. Every time I write from Wolf's point of view, I become him. 
And that's when I started to think like a wolf and to realise that certain things he just won't understand. And so, for example, in Oathbreaker, um, it was when I was thinking like wolf that I realised he doesn't understand revenge. I, I hadn't planned that before, but um, that made me realise that animals don't really understand revenge. Most of them don't. Mm. Um, so, yeah, interesting one, but it, it just seemed the right thing to do. Yeah. All right, we're going to go back and try that call again. Um, that didn't answer because I know... But thank you for that question. That was Yes, thank really you very much, Raven Goran. And there's another good question, actually, by Big Z, which I'll get round to in a moment, who's just asked that in the chat room. Um... Right now, nope, this is your second tea. chance. Got a second or two to answer. Answer now or forever hold your peace. Must be a nice cup of tea. Must be. All right, forget about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, where are we going to now? I'm not too sure where this is. We're going to take potluck. I mean, it could be anywhere in the world. It could be anywhere in the world. Okay. Yeah. Hello. 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 What's your clan name? Um, Kodak. Kodak, and where are you? Where are you? Which country? Um, England. You're in England, all right. <laughs> okay, hello, you're, Kodak. You're speaking to Michelle. Hi, Kodak. Hi. Um, I was wondering if um, if you based Thiazzi on anyone that you know in real life? Or? Um, Thiazzi, nobody's ever asked me that. Um, not any specific person, but he, he's kind of uh, an amalgam, a, a collection of everything... I don't like in some men. <laughs> I've got to be a bit careful about this. I do like men. But, you know, some men really irritate me, um, particularly when they're, just because they're strong, they throw their weight around. They're bullies, basically. Um, and some men can be very, very nasty. So, yes, I didn't have a particular man in, in my mind. Thank goodness. I don't know anyone like that. But I was sort of taking uh, mannerisms and uh, behavioural patterns from a number of different people. Um, and then after a while, I tend to forget who they're based on because he's just the Um Yeah, interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Okay, very nice to talk to you. Thanks very much, Kodak. Thanks. Thanks, Fantastic. Kodak. Fantastic. Now then, we are going to go to Norway. How about that? Oh, yes. That sounds good, doesn't it? I'm going to Norway soon, actually. Are you? <laughs> yes. I wonder if there's any snow. I think so. playing in the snow it might be hello hello what's your clan name uh, i love wolfies i love wolfies you're talking <laughs> to michelle hello I yeah hello Wolfie. hello mm, okay my question was uh what is your favorite book like other than wolf brother you mean and... my what's my favorite book that i haven't written yeah yeah uh i i don't i have lots of favorites um because i love reading and when i'm not writing I'm mostly reading. So I read in the morning, I read at lunchtime, I read in the evening. Um, but if you said, no, no, come on, Michelle, you've, you've got to choose one book, uh, I think it would probably be The Lord of the Rings, um, J.R.R. Nice. Tolkien. Yeah, I really love that book. But I have to be very careful with it because it's so powerful that I get miserable when I've finished it. Um, so I have to be a bit careful with it. So mm, nice yeah. question. And your English, by the way, is really good. Um, uh, yeah, I, w I lived in California for a year, so <laughs> I see. Hence the accent. Pretty good. Pretty good. Have you what? got another question? Yeah. Have you? Um, tell us. What, um, yeah. What's, what's, what's your like? favorite character in the yeah Wolf Brothers series? Or what's yeah. my favorite character? Um, well, I like writing from all the different characters. I like, I love the Soul Eaters because writing from them, you know, as them is is terrific fun, um, and I'm very fond of Finkedin. Uh, and of course, Torek and Wren. Um, I love writing from their points of view. But I think, again, if you said, no, no, you've got to choose one, I think it would have to be Wolf. Um, I'm very, very fond of Wolf. I shall miss him. You really love animals, right? I do. I don't love all animals. Uh, you know, um, I'm not that keen on monkeys, actually. <laughs> I just, you know, not that keen on them. And I didn't think mm. I was that keen on bears uh, until I went and saw the polar bears in the Arctic for Soul Eater. And I, but I do like them. So, but yes, mostly I do like animals. Yeah. yeah nice talking to you. Very nice talking to you. Yeah. Thank Excellent. you, I love Wolfie. Thank you, I love Wolfie. Yeah. Wolfie. Bye. And from the fo frozen wastes of Norway, actually, we didn't actually find out what the weather's like, but I bet it is snowing. Let's see if we can go to South Africa. Where it'll be 
summer in South Africa, isn't it? I think it will be, yeah. yes. It's probably out on the beach, I should think. If they're sensible, yeah. No? Okay. We can try again a bit we later. We can try again a little later. Um, just a reminder to everybody, please, if you have already registered with Skype to talk to Michelle, make sure that you are ready because we will be calling you. So make sure you're by the computer and ready to take the call. And also make sure you've changed your status, please, because I can see a lot of people here who are showing up as not online. OK, and if you're not showing up as online, I'm not going to call you. So please make sure that you are showing green online. OK, now then, let's try another call. I don't know where in the world this is, but we'll find out in a moment. Okay, and the third one will be lucky for us, I think. It's quite exciting, this. Yes, yes. The, the tension is building. Oh, no. Hello. Hello, what's Hello. your clan name? Hello. Hello, what's your clan name? Oh, Kiwi. Kiwi. Where are yeah. you, Kiwi? Which part of the world are you in? Um, actually, I'm from France, but I live in Canada. Okay, so okay. you're in Canada right now? Yeah. Fantastic. Well, you're talking to Michelle. Hello, Kiwi. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Good to talk to you. Have you got a question or several questions for me? Uh, yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, um, uh, Wait. <laughs> no, don't worry. <laughs> I, I wanted to know, uh, are you going to Canada soon or like? Um, I have no plans to come to Canada at the moment. Um, I, I went to Canada for a short tour a few years ago, you know, to, to talk in a, a few schools and that sort of thing. Um, of course, I'm very, I'm very good friends with my Canadian publishers. And so if they asked me to come back, I'd be delighted to because I'd love to come back to Canada. Um, uh, so I'm afraid at the moment there are no plans, but if, if the publishers ask me or if I can think up a reason to have a research trip in Canada, I would be there like a shot because I love Canada. Um, okay. The last time I think I was there was in Vancouver, um, which I really, really liked. Um, I thought it was fantastic. Oh, okay. It was wonderful. And I'd like to get to Newfoundland and, and look around there, but um, that, that's a hope at the moment. But I'm a bit busy planning the next series. Oh, yeah. I see. Uh, like I'm in the east part of Canada. Like, okay. Like, in Vancouver, like yep. Toronto and everything. Yep. So. I ended up in Toronto last time. That was lovely too. Actually, I really enjoyed it. Have you got another uh, question? Uh, yeah, it's about a book. Mm -hmm. Like you know, the second book yes. when uh, Torak discover like. You can travel um, in other animals and yes. everything. Yes. Uh, why did he discover it now and not before? Because, like. Ha, huh, that's an interesting. Nobody's ever asked me that. Um, I think the reason I knew he was going to be a spirit walker, I knew he was a spirit walker from before I started the first book, Wolf Brother. But I felt, um, as a matter of storytelling, it was too complicated uh, to have that coming in as well as the story of Wolf Brother. You know, he's got enough to deal with. Um, yeah. And it didn't really have a place in the story. Uh, whereas in Spirit Walker, it does. And so that's part of the thing that, that I like about planning a series. You know, I have all the different things in mind and then it's working out which things fit which story better. So I just felt that it would have uh, crowded Wolf Brother to have all that coming in at the same time as Torek losing his father and meeting Ren. It's just too much. Um, it didn't have a place in the story. Good question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kiwi. Nice talking to you. Really nice talking to you, Kiwi. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, we've got three quick questions from the chat room. First of all, Briggsy says, if you if you could spirit walk, what would you spirit walk into? I think I would spirit walk into a killer whale. Well, uh, because um, they don't have many predators. Uh, not even man really hunts them that much. Uh, they are really fast and dashing. I think they have a terrific life. Um, 
they have strong family groups that they've been called the wolves of the sea by some American Indians. You know, they have, they're a bit like wolves. Uh, they like talking and playing and it would just be enormous fun to be a killer whale. So yeah, I'd enjoy that. Sounds or rather to, to spirit walk in a killer whale. So Sounds yes, it'd be quite nice to get out of it. So okay. Well, well, talking about spirit walking, Forrest Fred wants to know, Michelle, we know what it feels like for Torek to spirit walk mm. into something, yeah. but what would it feel like to be spirit walked into? That would be quite off-putting, I think, um, depending on the strength of your souls. I mean, if you were, a, you know, the ice bear in, in Soul Eater, um, it, he's got very strong souls. And if you remember when Torak's spirit walks into the ice bear, it's quite difficult to get out. Um, so I don't think the ice bear, bear would find it that off-putting. It's just sort of, what's, what's happening? Something's, you know, I don't feel quite right, uh, but it's not too bad. If, on the other hand, Torak were to spirit, well, when he does spirit walk into um, the horse, the mare, in Oathbreaker, she's really um, quite rattled by it because, you know, he can control her because his souls are much stronger. So it rather depends on, on how, how strong your souls are. Mm. Good and question. Th third quick question from the chat room comes from Willow. Thank you very much for this, Willow, um, who wants to know, what's your favourite genre to read or write? You know, I don't tend to think in genres that much. Uh, I mean, I, I understand why you're asking the question. To read, I, I read all sorts of things. I mean, I've just finished reading the works of Raymond Chandler, who's a magnificent um, writer of thrillers. Uh, he wrote in the in the 40s, I think, and 30s, but his work doesn't date at all. So thrillers, when they're really well written, fantastic. Right now I'm write, reading a biography. I love biographies, the stories of lives, often of writers, um, I'm right, reading one about a, a Victorian uh, poet called Gerard Manley Hopkins. I actually haven't read his poetry, but I'm enjoying the story of his life. Um, but I am now reading his poetry. And sometimes uh, short stories. So I don't really have a, a favourite genre. Now, to, to write, obviously, it's a little different. Um, I do like writing adventure stories. You know, I, I call these stories, chronicles, adventure stories. Um, so I love that. I like the 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 difficulty of keeping the attention of the reader, making it very exciting. I love that. Um, there are a number of other, well, there's an, one other particular genre that I'm quite keen on. I'm afraid I'm not going to tell you what it is, um, but it's something I've been working on just for a one-off book that may, may come out. Uh, I don't know, but then you'll find out what that genre is. I'm sorry to be mysterious, but again, a bit superstitious. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, that's good. We've, we've got some more good questions coming from the chat room, actually. Um, but right now, let's try and do another call. And this is to someone who's never used Skype before, so fingers crossed. Well, good luck. Yeah. Hello. What's your What's your clan name? Um, Ian Productions. E e n p r o d u c t i o n. Ian Productions. That's an unusual yeah. name. Well, you? you're, you're talking to Michelle right now. Coming through loud and clear. So well done. Yeah. Thank you. So, what what question do you or questions do you have for me? Um, well, have you got any more books coming up for the series? Have I got any more books coming out? Well, there aren't going to be any more books featuring Torek and Ren and Wolf, I'm afraid, um, because I do feel quite strongly that I've I've brought that series to an end. And I hope I hope you think it's a satisfactory way. I don't want to give it away too much if you haven't read Ghost Hunter, but um, yeah, I'm reading it now. You're reading well, it now. Minutes, okay. Maybe. Well, it's. I think it's a satisfying ending and, and it would be a shame just to continue to write more adventures, which probably wouldn't be as good uh, and then would spoil the whole series for you. Uh, but having said that, I am going to be, I am writing, I'm planning rather um, another series set in prehistory, um, yeah. but a slightly later time and, and not with different characters, but lots of animals still. Um, so sort of yes or no is the answer to your question. Thank any, you. Any more questions? Um, yeah. Um, what was it like being with wolves in the where was it? Um, in the in the Wolf Trust in Berkshire. Yes. Yeah. It's magnificent. It's wonderful. Um, I mean, the first time I met wolves um, was there, and I was really nervous because I I'd, I'd loved wolves for so long, and I thought, oh, what if it's a letdown? You know, what if I'm, they just look like big dogs? Yeah. Uh, and it was brilliant because they're they're so mysterious, and they sort of they've got these wonderful amber eyes. I don't know if you can see this ring. This is. Um, amber, that's the colour of wolf's eyes. And this one is green amber, that's the colour of, of dark fur's eyes. 
Um, and they're, they're beautiful. They look at you and then look away. Um, and since then, I've, I've got to know some of the other wolves really well. And I'm, I'm quite good friends with three of them, uh, Torak, Mosey and Mai. Um, so I can go into their enclosure and, and they come bounding over to me and bounce all over me. <laughs> So it's um, it's fantastic. It's it's not something that goes away, and I will continue even after now I've finished Ghost Hunter. I'll still go and see them, um, and and look after them. So thank fantastic. You. Thank you very much. Thanks you very did much. your Skype thank very you. well. Well done in productions. Yeah, I'm very impressed with your technical knowledge. Absolutely, and I think we've got another one to the UK right now. Right. Um, really nice logo. Actually, it's a wolf, but a wolf with kind of a tattoo. Ooh. A tattooed wolf. Never seen that before. Wow. Great idea. Hello. 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 What's your clan name? Hi, this is Mystic Wolf. Oh, no, sorry. Mystic Howl. <laughs> <laughs> Mystic Howl. Get it right, Mystic Howl. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michelle. I've got Michelle. so many <laughs> Well, that's Honest probably... Meet you, Michelle. Well, it's very nice meeting you. Um, Mystic Howl, I think it was, wasn't it? Yes. You... Yeah, Mystic Howl. Excellent. Um... Right, my first question is, what is your favourite clan in the series, and why? Huh. Um, I think my, well, the clan, yes, it's different, it's difficult, because some clans are, are great fun to write, but I don't necessarily have that much affection for them. I mean, I really enjoyed writing the, the Red Deer clan, um, <laughs> because I thought they were really irritating, <laughs> you know, they sort of think they're better than everybody else. Um, and I enjoyed writing the other deep forest clans, the, the forest horse and the auroch, because they're so weird. You know, they really are weird and... and uh, yeah, scarring yeah. their skin. Absolutely. You know, these poor people, you know, how misled can you be? Um, but if you're saying, you know, what's, what's one of my favourite clan, I think it has to be the raven clan. Um, some people ask me, so, you know, why isn't it the wolf clan? But I've actually always had it slightly against in for the wolf clan because they weren't yeah. terrific... For, for Torak when he needed them. Uh, but the Raven Clan, you know, um, the Raven Clan, yeah. though, I think they're, they're, mo they're the, the most sort of moderate in the sense that, you know, they don't move every single day, which would be a mm -hmm. bit of a drag. Um, they, they, they're not too religious. Um, they're a little bit easygoing. And, and they've got a terrific leader. You know, they've got the best leader in, in Finketin. Yeah. So I just think it'd be quite fun to be a Raven. Um, so, yeah, interesting question. Thank you. Um, and my second question is, um, do you mind if I mention about the death that occurs at the beginning of book three? Beginning of book three, the death. Uh, oh, is it? Book? Yeah, it's book three. Um, I'll call him code name. Okay. Um, you can have to remind me. To, uh, can I say it? Bail. <laughs> oh, that's that's uh, that's book five. Is it book that's, five? That's, that's what threw me. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I didn't, didn't actually think there was a death in book three, but okay. Um, um, but yes, yeah, no, you, you, fine. Go my ahead. Question, yeah, my question was, um, how did you feel about killing him off? Pretty awful, actually. Um, the thing was, yeah. um, I felt even worse about creating him because in a sense, you see, I planned the whole series. <laughs> oh, and wow. so <laughs> when, when we meet him in the second book, I knew what was going to happen to him. And I felt, when I felt most like a rat was in book four, actually, in Outcast, because he was so nice. You know, he's so nice to yeah. run. And he's, he's, a, he's a good boy, but he's going mm. to be a man, you know. And, and I did feel a real heel. It's a bit like, you know, it's almost felt like killing my son sort of thing, because, um, yeah. yeah, pretty awful. Um, but you have to yeah. do that sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And if I hadn't been upset, there would have been something wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, good question. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your call. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice, nice talking to you. Bye. Bye. Okay, it's going really well in the chat room. Um, I think we should try to keep up, actually, because otherwise we're going right. to get completely snowed under. Yep. So Wolf Wanderer wants to know, and keep the questions coming, please, because we, you know, we, we can handle them as long as Michelle is still standing. <laughs> yep, yep. Wolf Wanderer says, Michelle, why didn't you write any scenes in COAD from one of the Soul Eaters' point of view? Mm, mm. Yeah, um, it did occur to me. It did occur to me to do that, uh, to write from one of their points of view. But I think part of the reason is that it is scarier uh, when you aren't inside someone's head and it's more mysterious when you're not inside their head. Um, then all you've got to go on, which is this, what, what Torak has, is, is what they do, um, their actions. 
um, and what they say. So I just felt that was the main reason. It was scarier and, and more um, keeping the reader in the dark as, as Torak is um, by not getting inside their head. Um, and the second thing is that I felt I wanted to keep to just three viewpoints. I don't... I, I, you, you can fragment a story if you have too many viewpoints. Um, and so Torak, Ren and Wolf, you may have noticed there are a few few short chapters from Finkeddin's point of view. Um, I think there are a couple in Soul Eater. I know there are a couple in uh, Ghost Hunter. But we don't really get too much into his thoughts because um, I want to keep him mysterious. Mm. Yeah, okay, nice I've, just, I've just done something stupid. And I actually haven't got the person's name who's asking this, but, oh. but it's a good question. Will Michelle ever return to Malawi to write about the Southern African tribes? Um, I definitely wouldn't rule it out because uh, I don't rule anything out. You, you can't when you're a writer um, because some story may come to the surface that needs an African setting and then Malawi would probably be the place I'd go. Mm. Um, I have no plans at the moment uh, to go there, but, you know, never rule anything out. Never rule it out. Veronix no. wants to know, when you was writing the first book, did you, did you, you thinking, I think, were you thinking that you will write the whole series? Yes. Um, pretty much as soon as I started writing Wolf Brother, I, I was having a lot of fun, and so I didn't want it to end. Um, but I also felt that the story wouldn't end. You know, there would be so much more to tell because, in a sense, Wolf Brother is just the first time when Tarek is starting to get to know his world. And I thought, well, you know, that's just the forest. But then we've got the sea, the far north, mm. the, the, you know, the, the lake, the deep forest, the mountains. There was so much more. And so I just sort of took time out from Wolf Brother um, and just planned pretty much the whole series in about a week. Yeah. Um, Willow's come back with another good one. If the books were turned into a film, and of course we, we think that's happening, um, would crossed. you would you want a professional actor to play Torak and Wren, or mm. would you want new faces? I think I'd like a mixture of the two. I mean, you'd, you'd probably need a professional or someone who's done a bit of acting training um, to, to be any good. Maybe not, I don't know, but I would definitely want new faces if I had a choice. I mean, I should just make clear, because I do get letters from people saying, you know, um, can I be Wren and, and things. I don't have any control over the casting. Um, but if I did, I would want new faces. Um, I always think it's nicer rather than seeing, you know, seeing someone thinking, oh, you know, that's the guy from Twilight or something like that. Yeah. He's too old. <laughs> but, you know, something like that. Um, so I'd, I'd want someone new with, with sort of interesting faces, um, not the sort of very regular features that you see on soap operas yeah. and things like that. And library yeah. girl, I think that's library girl, but library girl, it's a bit of a <laughs> right. howl. I'm not going to attempt that. No, it says, uh, would you like to come to the Wolf Conservation Centre in NY for a visit, please? I didn't know there was one, and that'd be in New York State, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure there is um, one. I, I would love to come. Um it's a question of when I'm going to get out to New York. Um, I mean, I was there earlier. I mean, I was in New York, New York, New York City. Um, I think it was in July or something to do some breakfast television, which was kind of weird, a whole week for just about seven minutes filming. Um, I would love to. I'd love to come to some of the wolf um, trusts and sanctuaries in, in the States. Um, but it is a question of, you know, when I'm invited and, and um, if I've got time and that sort of thing. OK, now let's, we can try and go back to Norway. Yes. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. What's your clan name? Oh, um, Miss John. I can't pronounce that. But <laughs> Miss John or something like that. Uh, Hello, I'm Michelle. You're talking to Michelle. Hi. Ask her whatever you want to. Okay. Um. Um. My first question is... How many clans are there actually in Torax World? Ah, <laughs> you've asked me a question I don't think I can answer because I've never actually counted them up. Um, so I can't answer that. I, if if I, I went home and sort of counted them up, I probably could because the thing is, there are all the clans named on the main map. So you could count all those, but then there are a few extinct clans, clans which have died out, uh, like the Beaver Clan and the Eagle Owl. And there's probably a few others mentioned in the story. So, well done. You've asked me a question that I can't answer. <laughs> Try another one. Um, what? what? What did you say? You Try another question. Another question. Yeah. 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 
is it certain that the films are going to be made? Are there going to be additions? Um, it's, we're hoping the films will be made. Um, what the situation now is that they're in what's called development, which means that they're working on the script, they're trying to work out where to film the, 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 the film, um, they're trying to work out how to deal with Wolf, because wolves aren't very good actors. Wolves don't, yeah. they don't see the point of acting, so you can't train wolves. And so that's going to be a little bit difficult. So they're, they're trying to work all that stuff out, um, and it'll be very expensive to make the films. So they haven't made the final decision yet. Um, when they do, if and when they do, then we'll, we'll put something on the clan, um, so you'll know as soon as possible. So I'm afraid I can't be more definite than that. It might be a couple of years, it might be longer. I just don't know. So we'll have to keep our fingers crossed. Oh, good. Okay. Thank and you very then, much. Oh, yeah, and then, the, uh, what are the different festivals in Torax World? I might start celebrating them. Wow, <laughs> that's an amazing idea. Well, let me see. Um, well, there's there's Midsummer. That's that's pretty important um, yeah. in in ancient peoples, and that's a particularly good festival to celebrate because it's also Torax birth night. Yeah. So that's, that's that's quite a good one. I always I always drink a toast to Torax at Midsummer night, and of course in Scandinavia you always make a big fuss of middle, Midsummer anyway. Yeah. Um, you know that's a pretty big one. Souls Night um, is also a nice one. I mean, we've just, it, it, this is really Soul's Day, as it were, because yesterday was Halloween. Um, and that's quite a nice one. Um, although it sounds a bit weird, you know, but, you know, if if you've got a grandfather or someone who, who died, it's nice to remember them and, and um, it's quite nice. Um, there are others. I'm trying to remember from my my um, my notes and some of them didn't get into the, the stories. Um, you know, they're, they're just sort of the particular ones that the, the deep forest clans celebrate. Um, but I think those are the main ones. And then the the winter solstice, when the sun comes back um, in December, that's an important one. I don't think that really came into the story very much, but it is actually quite an important one. Because obviously yeah. Torak lives, um, as you do, in, in further north. And so it's yeah. really important when it gets, gets light again. Um, so those are the big three, I think. What a really nice idea. Yeah, and by the way, your English is fantastic. Thank you. Really I'm good. actually mostly in English. I'm just living in Norway. Okay, me. well, lucky you. <laughs> I'm not the Scottish. Okay. What's it, can I just ask, what's it like? Is it snowing there now? No, it's not. Oh, it's not. It's, it's not expected to snow soon. Are you oh, in okay. Oslo or? No, it's down in Stockholm, more, more right. south of Oslo. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it wouldn't be snowing yet, but um, okay. Well, really nice talking to you, and thanks for some great questions. Thanks a lot. See you in the okay, clan. Can I ask a question too? All right. Yeah, just just quickly. We, there are two people here. So. But, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. A question. Yeah. What's your question? Uh, what? Um. Um. Uh, um, what, 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 what time period will the next series be set in? Ah, now you're asking what time period. Well, I'm afraid I'm not going to be very deaf. I know, but I'm not going to tell you because I, when I'm working on the series, I don't like to give the details too much. Um, it's a little bit later than Torax time. Torax time is 6,000 years ago. This yeah. is uh, a little bit later. But just, okay. ju but not, but still prehistoric. Um, yeah. So that's all I can tell you. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank nice you. Try. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you, Norway. Thank you, both of you. Thanks it very sounds much. Sounds like the Eurovision Song Contest, doesn't it? We should, we should get some votes in. Um, where should we go next? I think this is. I think this is England. Right. We'll see. Hello, what's your clan name? Phantom Wolf. Hello, Phantom Wolf. You're speaking to Michelle. Hello, Phantom Wolf. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you, which scenes out of all the books or scene did you enjoy writing most? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, which, which is that there are some scenes that stand out. Let me just have a quick think. I liked writing in Spirit Walker. I very much enjoyed the first time Torak really spirit walks. Um, when he's he's fallen into the sea and he's in the kelp forest and then he sees himself sort of floating in the sea uh, because he's, he's spirit walked into the seal's body. Um, 
I, I really enjoyed that. I hope I liked the sort of the description of, of the water and the kelp forest and then, you know, this horror of seeing himself sort of drowning. Um, I enjoyed that. Um, the scene in Soul Eater when, when they have to amputate part of Wolf's tail, I found that very dramatic um, and I enjoyed that. Uh, and then some of the rites, um, you know, the Soul Eater's rites in the caves in, in Soul Eater. Oh, there are an awful lot, actually. I've had a lot of fun with these books. <laughs> um, so I don't think I could... Again, um, well, I don't want to give a spoiler um, in Ghost Hunter to after the, the climax when Torak is lying on the mountain under the stars. I'm not going to give too much yeah. away, but I, I loved writing that bit. Um, I like reading that bit. Oh, good. I'm glad. I just really... It was actually really hard to write. Um, I was looking forward to it, but then it was very hard to write. I can imagine, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was hard. Um, so there are there are lots of... I mean, when Torak has the soul sickness in, in um, uh, Outcast and he, you know, he loses it, he doesn't understand all these different animals and things, and, and I enjoyed those. So and, and there's loads. I mean, the, the, the forest fire in... Um, Oathbreaker. I'm going to go through the whole series now, aren't I? So uh, <laughs> I don't think I can give you a, um, the, the key dramatic, the, when they're very, very emotional. Those are the, the ones I particularly like. Um, okay, thank yeah, you. Good and, question. Um, also, where did you get the idea for um, like the three souls and after death you have to draw the death marks so that they stay together? Yeah, yeah. To well, a lot of that, I'm glad you asked that. A lot of these things I didn't completely make up. Uh, that's why I think they feel real. I've based them on real hunter-gatherer beliefs. Not Stone Age, we don't know Stone Age beliefs, but more recent hunter-gatherers, people like the American Indians, um, some American Indians anyway, um, the Inuit, some Aboriginal tribes, um, African tribes. Um, the, the particular, uh, most civiliza or civilizations or cultures have more than one soul. I mean, we're ca actually quite unusual in thinking we've just got one soul. I think the ancient Egyptians had something like nine or, you know. Um, wow. the, yeah, I know. It gets very complicated. Um, I just thought three was a good number. Um, the way I started off thinking was that the name soul is kind of, kind of like your personality. And that's based on the Inuit idea of the attack. In fact, I was going to call it that, but then I thought, no, just call it the name soul. So that's like your personality. And then it seemed very natural to have the clan soul as the sort of the social level. Um, and then the world soul, which I think is based on some American Indian beliefs, being connected, everything's connected. So that just seemed like the, the different levels in Torak's world. Um, and, and the death marks, you know, I think I got certain cultures, I think somewhere in Malaysia there's a tribe, and I can't remember, um, do make marks on, on the body to, to sort of keep the souls together. But I can't for the life of me remember where I got it from. Um, <laughs> but then the, the, the fact that they're in red ochre is, is very ancient. Um, I mean, they've found graves and skeletons, sort of tens of thousands of years old, uh, marked with red ochre. So all of that came together. Um, so yeah, nice question. Well, thank you, very interesting. Good, excellent. And um, just one last little question. Yep. And that's... Are you planning to come to West Yorkshire anytime soon? Because I know you've been to the yeah. Elkley Book Festival before, but I've always missed you. I really oh. would like to meet you. Right. Well, I was in I was in Halifax and um, Calderdale and uh, Huddersfield and various places like that a few weeks ago. Um, oh. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Um, so I've I've kind of done the tour for this year, um, which is why I've got a cough, and I will shortly be breaking off to cough. In fact, can I just can you mute? Yeah. <coughs> yes, we had to do that to protect your ears, otherwise they'd be bleeding right now. Uh, um, I'm hoping at I think next year I'll be doing about a week's publicity in something like it's April or May, I think, and I may be coming to Yorkshire. I know I'd like to do Ilkley again actually because uh, it's a nice it's a lovely festival. Um, and I always like coming to Yorkshire because actually the pavers came from Yorkshire originally. Um, so that's a long time ago. Um, so that's a long waffly answer. Not sure, but hope so. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thanks very much. Nice talking thank to you. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Thank, thank you. you. And now um, I'm going to try to... Oh, I got a little bit confused. Uh, yes, um, I'm going to try to get us across to the States. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Something like lunchtime, I should think. Know. Yeah, it will be actually. It's about yeah. noon. Yeah. Maybe they're having lunch. 
Hello. 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 What's your clan name? Um, my clan name is Wolf Shaman. Wolf Shaman. Shaman. Wolf Shaman. Oh, Wolf Shaman. Wolf Shaman. Well, hello, Wolf Shaman. You're speaking to Michelle. Hello, Wolf Shaman. Hi, I'm Michelle. Hello. Hi. Can I ask you where where in the states are you? Um, I'm in North Carolina. Okay, fantastic, excellent. Well, it's it's great to talk to you. Do you have a a question for me, or more than one? Um, what would you like to ask, Michelle? Um, in the sixth book, who is Narander compared to Narek? Because that part kind of confused me. Okay. Um, well, spoiler here for anybody who who hasn't read Ghost Hunter, you might want to close your ears now. Um, N Naranda, it, it, are you asking his relationship to Narek? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, he's the father. Nar okay. Naranda is the father of Narek. I mean, what may have confused you is that Narek, in some of the previous books, was a was a a little um, a lemming. Um, you know, and, and a vole and things like that. Um, but actually, what it was was that the father, um, many years before, um, Naranda had a son and loved him very much and lost him under circumstances which are described in the book. And so he went a bit mad. Um, and that was when he took to sort of carrying around a pet vole or a snow vole or a pet lemming and calling him Narek because he couldn't bear to have lost his son. So he, he, that's what maybe confused you. That one minute Narek is a lemming, and the next minute he's a boy who died many years ago. But Naranda is the father. Does okay. That, does that clear it up for you? Yeah, it does. Good, good. Do you have another question? Um, yeah. In the in one of the previous books, I can't actually remember which one, but mm -hmm. um, it says that every one thousand years a creature is born, uh, like a soul walk, a uh, spirit walker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would it be possible that, like, an animal could, like, be spirit walking into somebody? Yes. Yes, it would. It doesn't have to be a person. Um, it, it would probably, you know, we, we, we might not hear about it because the animal might not understand what was going on, depending on what the animal is, um, and they wouldn't have any way of communicating to us. But that's a really nice um, thought, and, and absolutely, yes, it doesn't necessarily have to be a person. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Wolf Shaman. Catch you in the colony, in the, in the clan I'm in. Nice one. Thank you very much, Wolf Shaman. Goodbye. Bye. Nice. And I think it's back to England now. Yes, here we go. This is someone who says, I want to suck your blood. Oh. <laughs> it's just friendly, isn't it? Yes. Hello, what's your clan name? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me third time? No. Yeah. Got a little bit of a technical problem there. Come back to them. Yeah. Perhaps. Okay, now let's try here. Oh, I think we've got a slight issue with this as well. Let's keep our fingers crossed. This is the second time I tried. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Fantastic. What's your clan name? Uh, Monkey. Monkey? Yeah. Hello, Monkey. You're speaking to Michelle. Hello, Monkey. I'm Michelle. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Do you have a uh, question for me? Yeah. Uh, what 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 were you what are you planning to make after this uh, Chronicles of Ancient Darkness? That you finished them. Well, I'm uh, I'm writing. I'm preparing another series, um, which I think will be about five books. Um, it it will be set in prehistory, but a little bit later than Torak. Uh, Torax time and a, a different part of the world a um, little bit warmer I can tell you that but um, I'm afraid I'm not going to tell you much more because it, I'm still working out the details um, yeah. so but I'm very keen on it and it's it's getting quite exciting and, and um, quite a few animals but different animals not, not wolves so yeah. Um, yeah that's what I'm working on at the moment oh great excellent yeah uh uh, how uh, got another one? How um, how was it uh, uh, like? How was it studying the wolves? You think? Studying, really studying the wolves is really really fun. Actually, it doesn't feel like work at all. Um, 
the way I do it is I go to the, the Wolf Trust in Berkshire and they, they, they've got a beautiful big enclosure with trees and one of the enclosures has got a lovely sort of lake with a fountain and everything. And I just go in and um, spend time with the wolves. Uh, um, when they were little, when they were cubs, I spent quite a lot of time with them because I, I needed to for, for outcast. Uh, yeah. And I had a little notebook, uh, but I had to keep it out of the way because wolves, wolf cubs eat everything. And so if they'd got hold of my notebook, I would never have got it back. Um, but it's just the little sort of details, you know, seeing uh, Torak when he was a cub eating blackberries, but, you know, not eating the green ones because he didn't like them, just eating the, the ripe blackberries. But with the hazelnuts, he liked the green ones because they're softer, um, you know, and seeing them sort of digging up um, under logs and things to, to get at dandelion roots because for some reason they wanted to chew those. Um, it was really fun, actually. And a lot of it, I couldn't get into the story. Um, you know, you can't get everything in, otherwise it's boring. But um, so I've got pages and pages of notes of things they did. Um, but yeah, really, really fun. Um, it's one of the best things about doing the research is, is spending the time with the wolves. Yeah, I I went to a, a thing in in Scotland. It uh-huh. was a, a um a sort of a, yeah an an animal farm thing, and they had uh, about three or four wolves there, and they were explaining loads about them and feeding them. That was that was really good. So you've seen real wolves. That's brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Did you did you find them impressive? That, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really good. They're, they're different from dogs, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought they would be quite similar, but no. No, yeah, there there is a difference. I think it's in the eyes, particularly the way they look, and and that you, you can tell that they're they're much cleverer. That they're, they're yeah. um you know they they've really got a lot of thought behind those eyes. So congratulations on seeing the wolves. It's not everybody <laughs> has seen real wolves. So uh, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Do you have other questions or? Um, no, I can't, I can't think of any right That's now. That's great. You're you're in Spain, aren't you? Yeah, oh, in right. Spain. What's it like there now? Okay. Yeah, um, uh, um, yeah, it's it's 22 degrees out here Wonderful. right now. Nice. Oh. Well, it isn't here. It's no. November. <laughs> November has started with a, a bit of a splash here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, really nice talking to you. Anyway. Thanks, Monkey. Thank, Thank you, you, Monkey. Bye. And now Thank we're going to try a second time. We're going to try one more time here. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yes. You're quite lucky today, actually. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, yes. try and shout. Can you be a lot louder, please? Hello! Yeah, hello. Yes. Can just about hear you. What's your clan name? Um, I forgot. Okay, well, never mind. Well, we call you Anonymous, then. <laughs> what would you like to ask Michelle? Hello, Anonymous. What inspired me to write them? Um, I think, really, I mean, it came as a complete surprise to me. It was a complete accident. I was in the middle of writing grown-up books, and it was a bit like you're supposed to do some homework, and actually you stop to skive off and do something else. Um, because I found an old story I'd written, I'd tried to write at university about a boy and a wolf, um, and it wasn't very good because I didn't know how to write then. Um, but it was the story of the boy and the wolf. That was really what got me. And I think that was based on when I was a child and I'd really wanted a wolf and I'd wanted to live in the Stone Age. And and that was what inspired me. And I think that goes way back to when I was a baby um, because my parents had a um, an Alsatian a, a, a dog in Africa and she let me sort of clamber all over her and she looked after me. And so my first memory was of a really nice big wolfy dog um, and so that was that was really what inspired it, but that's going back a very long way. So as you can see, it came in bits and pieces. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your question. No problem. Okay, thank you, Anonymous. <laughs> All right, and now, why don't we get off to Slovenia? Yes. Interesting. Have you ever been to Slovenia? No, I haven't, no. actually. Just about to hopefully keep our fingers crossed. We're just about to talk to somebody from Slovenia. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. <laughs> Hello. 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 Good to hear you. What's your... Hello. What's, it's, it's Karamai, isn't it? Karamai. Hi. Ah, Hello. Hello, Karatmai. Um, my, my name is Michelle. 
Hello. Karot Mai. Karot Mai. Yes. Excellent. Do you have a question for me, Karot Mai? Uh, oh yes. Um, when I was reading the books, um, I noticed noticed uh, similarity between Wolf Brother and Outcast because Torak seems to uh, run away from people there. And then uh, again, I spotted similarity between uh, um, a Spirit Walker and uh, Oathbreaker because again, that of a friend took Torak on a journey mm -hmm. to. Um, and uh, yeah. anyway, he, he entered the ranch. And I uh, assumed there was a connection between the solitaires and host hunter too, but um, I didn't with the host hunter yet. So, was, did, uh, was this done on purpose or that's just a coincidence? Um, I think it's sort of half and half. Some of these were done on purpose because when I was planning um, the books, uh, most of the stories, Torak is going on a journey. Um, and there are similarities between, yes, you're right, Wolf Brother and Outcast. In both of them, he's he's running away from people for part of it. And I quite like that because he's different. In Wolf Brother, he's a, a boy. He's 12. In Outcast, he's undergoing the change between man and boy and man he's not yet a, ma a young man but he's 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 different from when he was 12 and so it's quite fun to see a, a similar situation but it's different for him because he's different um so yes some of that is is deliberate and other times it's just unconscious you know it just happens and that's what happens when you're writing stories it's a very interesting question okay Thanks. That's a pleasure. Very Thank nice talking to you. Thank you so much for your call. Thank you. And now I've got a very quick one, a slightly unusual one, but uh -huh. there's a lot of speculation in the chat room, Michelle, about this. It's a very important question. Uh, okay. Are you ready for it? I don't know if I'll know the answer, but... Do you like marshmallows? Do I like marshmallows? Yeah. I like them if you toast them over an open fire. Um, I don't like them when they're just the squidgy, soft things uh, in a bag. But if you toast them, we used to do this as kids. Um, you've probably done it. That's really fun because if they catch fire, this is probably quite dangerous. So, <laughs> you know, be careful. But then they go all caramelly. Yes, I do like marshmallows when they're caramelised on the outside, but not well, when they're just boring and raw. Well, now you know. <laughs> now you Thank know. you. <laughs> all right. Now this is to England. Doing quite well so far. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Glad I could answer that question. Yeah. Actually. Really. And the tension mounts. Are we ringing? Can't hear it ringing yet. No? Give, it, give it another few seconds. I see. No, we'll come back to that. Um, and this is, don't know where this is. This is complete potluck. It could be anywhere in the, in the whole world. Wow. Well. And, oh, good. Here we it's go. Ringing. Hello. 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 What's your clan name? Hello, what's your clan name? All right, you're listening to Ustream with the yeah. volume up. Can you mute your volume in yeah. Ustream, please? Off now, turned off. Okay. That's fantastic. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, what's yeah. your clan name? Leon. Leon, all right. You're talking to Michelle. Hello. Hi, Hi Leon. Can you tell me where in the world you are? I'm in England. I'm in Plymouth. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> okay, well, excellent. Yeah, I'm actually a girl. I don't even know why I give us a boy's name. but um, <laughs> I think that's very cool. That's very cool. Yes. Go for it. Okay, uh, my question is, um, you know in Ghost Hunter where it got to a point where there were lots of different stories going on, like there was um, like Torak on his own, run, run, on, run on her own, yep. little card. Was it quite hard to like keep all of the stories like together, like running continuously? It was incredibly hard. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, I, is it I, like, find that really difficult? It, it was very hard. Um, what I had to do... Um, was work out timelines. It's just on a piece of paper and say, you know, day one, Torak leaves the Raven Clan, day two and day three. Um, and then do the same thing for Ren, because she was about, what, a day behind or so, um, to begin with yeah. anyway. Uh, and then what I thought was, this is going to be really confusing for the reader. Um, and that's why I have, I've used the weather 
um, all the way through the story to try to give you some idea of what's happening. So I think yep. there's a very frosty night uh, and then it's snowy and then there's later on there's a fog. Oops, sorry, just hit the microphone. <laughs> um, there's fog. And I've tried then to, to that was helpful for me too um, as a marker. But yeah, the only way to do it was to actually write it out um, on a piece of paper and then keep track of it because otherwise yep. I'd have got really confused. Um, and the other thing was that was very, very complicated was the climax of Ghost Hunter um, because there was an awful lot of people involved. You know, there was Aostra, there was, you know, yeah. a number of Tokaros, there, there were various dogs. Um, it's like a big bad battle at the end, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> and I had to make sure that, you know, well, how many Tokaros are left and how many dogs? Um, right. You know, yeah. and you don't want to have one lingering to, to you know... <laughs> polish off Torek or something so yes very complicated um but then once you work that out um that's when it's fun because then you know you can just get down to the writing um yes or bring it all together at the end exactly exactly but that's why i like planning because you know if i didn't plan like that i would just get into terrible trouble uh and it would be tangled and messy and you wouldn't be able to understand it and if you couldn't understand it you wouldn't find it exciting um so yeah i'm really asked, I'm glad you asked that yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your call. I um, just want to say, like, um, I saw you at the uh, Putney signing. Oh, yes. I'm, so, I'm Sophie. I saw you a couple of times. Like, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. excellent. Jenny. I gave, gave the little photo of... Um, I remember that. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, that's really nice to, to, yeah. to meet you online again. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I really enjoyed the series. Well, well done. That was really good. Oh, thank you so much. That, that means a lot. So thank you very much. Excellent. Okay. Bye. Now, um, Wolfang says, I like your necklace. Thank you, Wolfang. You know, I always forget to mention these things. This is um, a necklace of seal claws um, from the ringed seal, Foca hispida, the Latin name. Um, that's the same uh, kind of seal that is Bale's clan creature skin. In fact, speaking of Bale's clan creature skin, I have one here. Um, wow. This is this is you can see all the beautiful silvery fur. That's um, this is the seal, the ringed seal fur from Greenland. Um, and even now, uh, quite often the Inuit, uh, when they kill a seal, they eat it. Obviously, that's why they kill it. But then they use all the different bits, um, and that's why an Inuit made this really gorgeous necklace. It's it's two flippers worth of seal claws. And I bought it in Greenland uh, when I was doing research for so the Spirit Walker because I just thought it's so Stone Age. So thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that because I would have forgotten and people must have been thinking, what is she wearing around her neck? Exactly. So now you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've got one or two more questions, actually quite a few more questions in the plan, but why don't we try another call now and try to find out where this is. No idea, actually. No idea. It's Hello. Like again. Hello. Hello, where are you and what's your clan name? Um, I actually don't really have an account. Well, I do have an account, but I can't remember my clan name because I don't really go on often. All right, call you anonymous. Where are you? I'm in England. In England? UK, London. Okay. A Londoner. Too, too Fantastic. Far, not too far from, from where we are at the moment. So what would you like to ask Michelle? Um, I would like to ask um, what inspired her to write her books. What inspired me to write the books? Well, I think it was a love of the Stone Age, partly. Um, and that goes back very early, before I could read. My parents had a big book of beautiful pictures of people who lived in the Stone Age, um, very dramatic pictures, um, and sometimes they were skinning animals and making clothes out of hide. And I used to look at this book, which I still have, because uh, my mum gave it to me. Um, I used to look at this book when I couldn't read, uh, but I could still just enjoy the pictures, and I, I wanted to live like that. So that, that was one of the early... Um, things and then I, I tried as a child I wanted to sort of build shelters out in the garden and things like that and then loving wolves was another thing and I you know I think that's partly because um, I, my parents had a, a dog an Alsatian when I was a baby and so my first memory was of a, a nice wolf um, a, a wolf like dog I should say um, so that's probably where it comes from very early on um, yeah yeah cool. Now, I wanted to ask, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm sure. Caroline, and hi, Michelle. I don't know if you remember me. I used to work at Simmons. Caroline. Ca Caroline Luda. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> hello, Caroline. Simmons, uh, for those of you who don't know, was, was the law firm where I used to work. So, hello. <laughs> so, 
so you don't miss your your life as a lawyer i dare say <laughs> please don't be offended um all lawyers who may be watching but no i have never missed it for a nanosecond i have to say um no i'm much happier being a writer even even when writing is difficult as it sometimes is i'm it just didn't suit me being a lawyer so no i i i, I like being my own boss because you you started writing while you were working as a lawyer i did <laughs> yes oh yes yes Sorry. no it's that's right. Um, I, I think a lot of writers do. Um, they try to write when they're still, you know, working at something else. But um, yeah, I used to get up at five in the morning and do a couple of hours in the morning in my flat before going into work. Um, wow. So yeah, was that at the time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I told anybody at the time. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we all thought it was very brave to feel, for you to embark on a on a complete uh, new Thank career. You. Well, some people thought me I was mad actually. <laughs> um, but uh, it's worked out, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, fantastic. Well, uh, but Sophie very much enjoys your your book. Your, your book always looks forward to to the next one. Wonderful. And myself as well, actually, uh, um, Anthony. Um, so, when is the next one out? Well, we finished the series, and so it's a good question. But I'm still planning the next series, so um, don't know. Uh, not next year, I'm afraid, because I'll still be writing it. Um, so possibly the following year. Yes, sir. And everyone in the clan will be the very, very first people to know. Yes, Because they, yes. they always are, because they're special. Yes. There, there will be more information probably early next year. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be able to tell you more. Is the next series also going to be about wolves? Wolves are not going to be so important in the next series, I'm afraid. Um, I think I've said, a, I've said what I want to say about wolves, and I think it would be a shame to go on uh, because, you know, you just think, oh, well, we've had this before, you know, more more of this sort of behaviour. We've had it when there have been cubs and things. And so, no, I want to try different animals. But it will um, be exciting. We know that. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's definitely going to be exciting. Oh, yes. and, and there may well be volcanoes in it. Mm. Um, that I can tell you. Now, there's a clue, everyone. <laughs> there's a clue. <laughs> worth, worth waiting for. We've been yeah, online now for one hour, 21 minutes, almost 22 minutes. And you've heard you've heard it first, yeah. Yes, you're wearing me down, volcanoes. you clan lot. <laughs> yes. Volcanoes, guys. Yes. Right, thanks or for maybe your call. One volcano. Thank you very much. Thanks for your call. And now I did say that um, there was nobody from Australia. Actually, we have got someone from Australia. Brilliant. So I heaven knows what time it is there. Let's keep our fingers crossed because it's a long way away. Let's hope it works. Oh hello. What's your clan name? I'm Tim Wolfbrother. Tim Wolfbrother. And whereabouts are you? I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, Australia. And what time is it there? It is 4.25 a.m. In the morning. Well, I've got to say, yes. you are such a dedicated fan. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to have you. And I'm going to say you're all over to Michelle now. Hello. And gosh, well done. I mean, yeah. I... <laughs> I'll, I'll treat you very gently because it's very early in the morning, but uh, brilliant. It's very early. <laughs> this must be very strange for you, but um, fantastic to meet you online. And uh, shoot, what, what questions do you have? Oh, could I just say a statement first? Um, of course. You, um, you came to our school once. I'm, I'm, I was originally from Burke Hall and you gave us a talk in our library. Right. Oh, yes. I remember that. Yes. It was very, it was very good. Excellent. I, yeah. I, I brought various things along to show you, I think, and everything. Mm, yeah. 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 Okay. You sent me a copy of Wolf Brother. Wonderful. It's Excellent. Mm. Brilliant. Oh, well, that, that's, that's positioned it nicely for me. I, I, re I really enjoyed that day. I can still, still see the library actually in my head. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Um, I was, I do have one question. Um, was dark fur and wolf okay after they lost their cub were they okay after they lost their have you finished ghost hunter i yet? have i finished you everything. have finished it okay um yes that they, they again spoiler alert for people who haven't finished ghost hunter but um yes they, they are okay um I, and i think this is realistic because sometimes wolves do lose cubs and they mm. do they do sometimes mourn um, for a while, but then mm. they get over it. And I think the evidence is they get over it more quickly than human beings if they lose a child. Mm. Um, so yeah. also they, they're helped by the fact that they have, they've got one cub left and he's yeah. a bit of a handful. So, you know, he's going to keep them busy and they'll have more cubs in the future. So they are a little different from, from human beings in that sense. You know, they've, they've been through the mourning process. Um, and I think the thing that, that really knocked Wolf sideways is when he 
he thought he'd lost the whole cl- the whole uh, pack. Um, yeah, and 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 you do find that sometimes with wolves. Um, yeah. I mean, there's evidence that you know when a, a grown up wolf in the pack is killed. There was there was one case I read about, and that the one wolf was killed by a mountain lion. This was in America, uh, and the other wolves mm. stopped playing for several days. You know, and then just sort of moped, really, because yeah. they were mourning. Mourning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, dark fur and wolf will be all right. Um, okay. It's a pretty strong pack. Um, yeah. But that's a nice question. Nobody's ever asked that. So. Oh, thank was, you. Yeah, it's good. Do you have another one? Because, you know, you you stayed up, so I, well, I hope you went to sleep and set your alarm, but... Um. <laughs> oh, I've, I've just been waiting on tenterhooks. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been so excited. Oh, this is brilliant. It's fantastic. It's the wonders yeah. of modern technology. Isn't it amazing? It sounds like you're around the corner. Yeah. Um, not really any questions, but I was just... I'm actually writing my own book at the moment. And right. I've, I was wondering if you've got any inspiring words... Oh, that's that's good that you you asked that. Um, well, congratulations on on writing. Thank you. Um, that's that's brilliant. It shows a lot of ambition, and that's good. Um, yeah, some some uh, suggestions. Um, I think a sort of practical practical suggestion is is carry a little notebook with you. Um, you know, well, I'm already doing that. You're already yeah. doing that. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, because you know. I do. And, uh, it's it's very very useful. Um, have one by the bed as well, by the TV. You know, because quite often you'll you might get an idea. You know, when you're just going to sleep or something, and just scribble it down because you will forget it in the morning. Um, I think something else. Yes, I was thinking about this the other day. If you get stuck, which you will do. I mean, I do. You know, a, a scene doesn't go well, or you're not quite sure how to end a chapter, something like that. It's if you've if you've sat for a while and it just isn't working. It's actually quite a good idea for go, to go for a walk. Um, mm-hmm. There's something, or, or to do something else, like go shopping. Yeah. Uh, there's something about the movement of walking uh, that actually helps thoughts come to the surface. Um, the Romans yeah. even had a, a Latin expression, solvator amb- ambulando, which I think means solution through walking. So, so go for a walk. Often I find then, you know, ah, that's the answer. Um, are you, you know, in terms of structuring the story... Um, that can sometimes be very difficult for new writers. Yeah. Uh, and I can give you just a couple of pointers on that. Um, the mm-hmm. first one is if you, if you get to know your main character quite well before you write, you know, and, and try to identify what they want, what's their aim in yeah. the story, um, and then throw obstacles in their way, you know. Yeah. And, and that actually is the structure of an awful lot of stories throughout the world. It's the structure of all my stories. You know, Torak wants to rescue Wolf and Soul Eater, but things get in the way. Um, and that sounds like a very simple way of describing a story, but and you can make it much more complicated, but that's the basic structure. And it's quite helpful if you think you're losing your way to sort of yes. get back to, now, wait a minute, what does my character, my main character, want and what's getting in the way? And that can kind of pull you back on course. Um, yeah, so it's sort of like obstacles in the way, and then that just builds the 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 whole um the plot. And it does. It does. It, it keeps the reader. It does. It and really I'm, does. Yeah. Um, and it, and it, I found yeah. Oh, go. I found with um with Wolf Brother and it's also series like Harry Potter. It's it's constant uh, on the edge of your seat sort of stuff, you know. It's yes. It's it doesn't linger on the irrelevant, and I really credit you for that. It's oh, absolutely brilliant work, and that's why it remains one of my favourite series. Thank you. Well, well, the, the the keeping it exciting is down to rewriting, you know, mm. cutting out the boring bits, um, yeah, tightening it up. I, I rewrite maybe thirty or forty times, so that's mm. my final bit of advice. You know, rewrite. And put it aside yeah. for a few weeks and then come back to it. So Okay. Uh, okay. Well good luck with your story. Um, Thank you very and, much. And congratulations on, on being awake at four in the morning. Yeah, get some sleep. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, lovely talking to good you. Good talking okay. to you. All right. Now Thanks, finally we we just got one more call now actually. And then we've got we've got a whole load of quick questions from the chat room. Sure. Um, but this one is also uh, it's quite a long way from where we are at the moment. Hopefully we're gonna get through to Poland. Oh. Fingers crossed. Doesn't sound good so far. No. No. Internet's a bit slow.
slow in Poland tonight. Never mind. I'm going to hang up on that and hopefully... Okay. No, whoops. Ah, oh dear, I've got it all wrong now. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. Isn't that awful? <laughs> Nearly went back to Australia again. Um, Just when we told her to go to sleep. Yeah, exactly. That wouldn't, wouldn't be nice, would it? Um, okay, we've got lots of questions. Quick fire questions yes. from the chat room. Okay. Because we're, we're coming up to an hour and a half now. Right. And I do understand that if we don't let you go, there will never be another series. Uh, that's true. So that's true. We better bring yeah. this to, to, to yeah. an end quite soon. But now. Let's, let's All right. WR34 says, How did COAD, which of course the Chronicles of Ancient mm. Darkness, come to. Ah, oh, we've got a call coming in from Poland. Ah, let's uh, take we'll, it. We'll let's come back to that it. question, yeah. but we'll. Yeah. Hello, what's your clan name? Hello, can you hear me? Ah, I've got technical. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, I think we've got. We better draw a line under that. I don't think that's going to work. WR34 says, How did COAD come to you? Like with JK Rowling, Harry Potter came to her while she was on a train and it was all mapped out in her head. How did it come to you? Well, it was it was bits and pieces. Um, you know, I think I've, I've talked earlier on about, you know, having a childhood love of wolves and the Stone Age. Um, but then later on, um, you know, I'd forgotten all about that. Um, and it was meeting a bear in Southern California that um, it was pretty scary. I mean, the bear, she was a mother bear with two small cubs and uh, she came towards me because she didn't like me being so close to her cubs. Mm -hmm. So um, she was, you know, I was about five feet away from her and she could easily have killed me. Uh, but I sort of talked to her to calm her down and, and walked, didn't run, but walked away. Uh, but that was a really terrifying encounter. That's, that's why I can write from first-hand right. experience about bears. Um, in in uh, Wolf Brother, and so all that all those sort of things came together in the story of Torek and Wolf. Um, it took me a little longer than a train journey. It took me about a week to work out the story um, mm. of the whole series. Um, Thank you very much. That was WR thirty four. WR stands for Wolf Reader thirty four. Mm. Got one from Spirit World. <coughs> excuse me, who we've also spoken to. Have you found in your researches something you wanted to share in the series, but you realised it wouldn't fit? Oh, there was lots. I mean, I've got a whole book on how to build a skin boat. Um, and I had, a, I, I was going to write a scene about, you know, building a skin boat, but then there wasn't any reason to put it in. Uh, it was really interesting. Um, lots about the clothes as well. Um, I mean, just to give you an example, it's funny you should mention that. Um, I brought along a, a reindeer hide mitten. Um, this was made by the Inuit. Um, and you can see it's reindeer fur. And it's really nice because the ins, the, the palm, of the of the of the mitten, the fur points up, and that means that if you're holding a fish or something, it's it's going to hook and it's not going to slither out of your hands. And I would all I would, I would have loved to have got that in all that sort of detail, but you know it's a bit mm. it slowed the story down. So I've got books and books on on the clothes and and how gorgeous they are, but there's only a few lines in the story. Um, yeah. There's probably loads of others that I'll think about on the train going home that I think ah. Oh, Geek Wolf wants it. to know if you could have an animal friend like Torak has Wolf, who you could communicate just like Torak and Wolf do. What sort of animal would it be? If if we were in the realms of fantasy where I could communicate with an animal, oh, it'd be a wolf. I think definitely. Um, you know, I like killer whales as well as I think I mentioned earlier. But the limitation would be I'd have to live by the sea. No, I think a wolf. Yeah, it would be that a wolf. Would be so cool. Yeah, terrific. It would be. Um, I Katerina says, will you come to Scotland to do signings? I'd like to come to Scotland. I was in Scotland earlier this year. Um, at the end of August, I was in Edinburgh for the festival and then I went over to Glasgow. Um, I would imagine I'll be coming back maybe next year, if not the following year. Um, so, yeah, I love coming to Scotland. Definitely. Cool. OK, so you, that's something to look forward to. Details um, will be on the clan as and uh, when as I do. How Half-Blood Ryan. Oh, Half hello, Half-Blood Ryan. Half Ryan. Yeah, you, you've said Ren made you change your plans. How different were your original plans from the finalised Ghost Hunter? And please do come for a signing in Kings Lynn, Norfolk. <laughs> you always ask difficult questions. Um, the question was, how did Ren make me change my plans in Ghost Hunter? Was it was it just related yeah. to... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that actually... She made me change my plan about the final scene, the ending. Um, again, spoiler alert if anyone hasn't read Ghost Hunter, but... Um, at the beginning, when I was planning the story, uh, the series rather, when I was writing uh, Wolf Brother, I thought Torak would walk off alone at the end of Ghost Hunter. And Ren made me change my plans. Around about when I was writing Soul Eater, I thought, this isn't going to work. 
she's not going to have it, he's not going to have it. And that's what made me change my, my plans. Wolf Fangs wants to know, why do Ren and Torak argue so much? <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, I think it's probably because I argue. Um, I've always argued with all my boyfriends. Um, well, Ren is quite sharp and critical. She's not going to um, keep quiet. If she thinks Torak's doing something daft, she's going to tell him. And uh, Torek's going to answer back, you know. I mean, that, that, that's the characters they are. Um, I, I don't think I could write them if they were sort of not arguing. Um, it just wouldn't work. It's partly the way I am. Mm. <laughs> good question and not well, a very good Wolf answer. Wolf Wanderer also wants to know something about Ren. Were you originally planning for Ren to become the Raven Mage instead of Dark and for Torek to go off on his own? Well, as I've said, um, I had thought that Torek would go off on his own um, at one point. Um, I never really planned for Ren to be the Raven Mage. I always felt that she wouldn't want that. So I never thought that was going to be the case. Quite how, you know, I was going to find a replacement, I wasn't sure about uh, until the answer stared me in the face uh, when I started to write Ghost Hunter. I mean, I'd known about Dark from, you know, before I wrote Wolf Brother. I, you know, he was a character, but... I hadn't realised the role he would play until quite late on in Ghost Hunter, which is interesting. Mm. Raven Girl Wren, again, says, uh, do you have any side jobs? Because you hear about these famous people with really strange jobs compared to what their known profession is. For example, Harry Hill, doctor, Delia Smith, hairdresser. Really? I didn't know that. Delia Smith, hairdresser. No, I don't. Well, I mean, I used to be a lawyer, um, but that was before I was published. No, I, this is an absolutely full-time job. I don't even have a family I don't even have a dog um I do nothing but write when I'm not writing I am reading somebody else's book I spend very little of my waking life in the real world it's mostly in my world or in worlds created by other people okay. and that's how I like it all right for the last question now <laughs> my goodness final question okay then, then we will let you go to write, write another series okay. it's from Wolfie Rocker and it's a really good question and it's very simple what question do your fans ask you the most often <laughs> um it has varied a bit um when wolf brother came out it was is wolf coming back um and then a, a bit later on it was you know how many books are there in the series and and why can't you write more books with torrent ren and wolf um a lot of you want to know how i got the idea for the series and you get various messy answers um because you know it's a messy answer to the, the whole thing um and recently it's been what are you writing now? Um, and I think I've answered that now. Um, so, yes, it's changed. But that's a really interesting question and one that actually no one has asked me. So, well done. And I'd just like to say before I go, thank you to everybody all over the world um, who's, who's phoned in or whatever it is in technological speak. Um, and it's been fantastic. Uh, this probably won't be the last that we'll be doing because I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have. Um, and thanks very much for asking such brilliant questions. Um, it's been it's been terrific. I, uh, you know, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Michelle. And I want to say thank you so much for the Clan Guardians for everything yes. they they do online. They really make the community work well, and they've yes. worked hard today. Yes, A big brilliant. thank you to them yes, too. Many thanks to all of you, Clan Guardians. You, we, we couldn't do it without you. Really couldn't. So thanks a lot, and thank you, the voice of admin. Yes for your pleasure. technical support. <laughs> We've all had a great time, Michelle, and let's make sure we do it again soon. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, then. Bye.